Failure gaps versus order blocks, which ICT concept is best? In this video, I'm going to cover both ICT concepts and make a conclusion about what I think is the best ICT concept based on what we're going to talk about in this video. There are many different versions of order blocks, so I recommend watching the video made about order blocks, proportion blocks, and changes to state of delivery. That way you get an overview of what we're going to talk about in this video. And if you don't know what a failure gap is, I will also recommend watching the video made about failure gaps. First, we're going to talk about what do we use order blocks for. So I personally use order blocks mostly as confirmation and also as a stop loss and also as a trade entry. And there are really different order blocks to each of these things. So for confirmation, I mostly use a change in state of delirium. As a stop loss, I could use a propulsion block. And as a trade entry, I could maybe use a continuation order block. Now that we know what we use order blocks for, the most of the time, I'm going to show you a brief example on how this looks like. So here we see that we have these two consecutive downclass candles, which is a order block. Then we see price makes a retracement down into this order block, touches the mean threshold, and then takes off, creating another order block. So an order block of an order block, and this order block is called a propulsion block. So we see price makes a small mohawk into this propulsion block, and then takes off. And we use mostly propulsion blocks for either as a trade entry or as a stop loss, as we don't want to see the mean threshold get traded to of a propulsion block. Next thing we're going to talk about is a continuation order block. A continuation order block looks a bit more like a propulsion block, but it's a bit different. So when we're in a intermediate term uptrend or when we're on the buy side of the curve, every downclose candle is going to act as support. So we see that we have this downclose candle right here. This downclose candle is a continuation order block. As we see, it's the only downclose candle in this leg up. Then we see price makes a retracement down into this downclose candle, fails to touch the mean threshold, but, that, but that's not a criteria of a continuation order block, and then takes off. And we usually use continuation order blocks either for confirmation, that price is still willing to move higher when we see price is respecting downclose candles, or of course as a potential trade entry. The last thing we're going to talk about is a change in state of delivery. A change in state of delivery often occurs when price sweeps a form of buy side or sell side liquidity. And the last downclose candle or consecutive downclose candles down to that sweep on liquidity is our change in state of delivery or an order block. So when price makes a close above the highest body of the change in state of delivery, it is valid. And when price makes a retracement down to it, it should get respected. And I usually use changes to state of deliveries as a confirmation that the smart money reversal has occurred and price is willing to move higher. Or I use it as a potential trade entry as a low risk buy. Now let's shift the focus to further gaps. The first step is identifying your further gap, which is actually pretty straightforward. It's just really a simple free candlestick pattern where the wicks don't overlap the body, creating an imbalance. As we see from this high of this wick, up to this low of this wick, it creates this kind of gap. This gap is a fairly gap. In our first example of a fairly gap, we notice that we have a free candlestick pattern forming within the discount from the low of this wick or the high of this wick up to the low of this wick. And that's within the discount. And when it's within the discount, there's higher probability for the fairly gap working. And we also see the price is close to touching the consequent encouragement, which is the midpoint of the Foley gap, we see the price is very close to touching it, but fails to. And that also gives confirmation for higher prices. So we should see price taking out internal range liquidity. And we see the price reacts off this Foley gap and takes out internal range liquidity. Now for this example, we mostly use this Foley gap as a trade entry. And we could also use it as a stop loss, which would mean we would see this as an intermediate term low, but then I'm going to cover in the next example. The intermediate term low forms within a further gap, and we don't want to see intermediate term low being taken out before we make a smart money reversal. And I have made a video about intermediate term lows and highs, so I would recommend checking that out. Another example of an intermediate term high is this right here. We see price makes a high within a further gap, so we should not see this intermediate term high get retraced back to before we make the smart money reversal. So if you were to take a trade entry based on another fairly gap, let's just say, or let's just say this large imbalance right here, then you could short this large imbalance, put your stop loss at this higher, 
and then target any form of psilocyte liquidity over here, which could be, as you say, this low. So what do we see with price does? Price does not take out this intermediate term high. And instead, it reaches all the way down to the slope. But over here, when we come over to the buy side of the curve, when price already have made the smart money reversal, we see that price does take out this intermediate term high, as it is no longer protected as price is on the buy side of the curve. If we were to put the intermediate term high or a high within a FLA gap into one of these categories, I would put it into stop loss, and we should not see this intermediate term high get retraced before we make the smart money reversal. Next up, we're going to talk about how we can use FLA gaps as a confirmation. So we see the price tapped up into this hourly volatility gap. And we don't know if price is going to react from this volatility gap. But we think price is most likely going to, as this volatility gap is within a premium. So in that case, we would drop down into a lower time frame and see if price is reacting from the volatility gaps and seeing if price is respecting the intermediate term highs. And that way, we can use volatility gaps as a confirmation. Down here on the 15 minute time frame, we now want to see bears value gaps get respected as that will lead to a confirmation for lower prices. Right here we see the price tapped up into this bearish PD array or this bearish value gap. So if price is going to respect this bearish value gap, it will lead to a confirmation for lower prices. Right here we see the price respected this bearish value gap. And what do we also see? We see the price created a market structure shift, and we can also identify the market structure shift by price making a valley gap within the market structure shift. So this valley gap is really the leading confirmation that price is going to move lower as it created a market structure shift within this valley gap. So in that case, we could anticipate price taking out the sell side liquidity. And we thus see price takes out the sell side liquidity. That was basically how we could use valley gaps as a confirmation and also as a stop loss, and lastly as a trade entry. Now we're going to talk about how we can combine a order block with a valley gap. So we see that we have these two consecutive down close candles. These two consecutive down close candles is an order block. And this order block is also paired with a valley gap. And then we see price makes a retracement down into the order block, also touching the valley gap. And then after that, takes off, taken out by side liquidity. We also have another example, as we see over here, where we have these two consecutive down close candles, which is delivering from this value gap right here, that's within a discount. So in that case, we can see this as a confirmation. And now price made these two consecutive down close candles as a order block. And we also have a value gap to pair with that order block up here. And what do we see? We see price makes a retracement touching the order block and also respecting the value gap. And after that, takes off, taken out by side liquidity or this equal highs up here. Now we have come to the conclusion. So personally, I don't think there's any ICT concept that's better than one another. And it really just comes down to personal preference in what ICT concept requires that's running within the markets. But if I had to choose between a value gap and all the versions of an order block, I would probably pick the order block as there are many versions of a order block. For example, there's a propulsion block, a change in state of delivery, and continuation order block.